As cannabis legalization spreads throughout the U.S., states are looking at different ways to ensure those most affected by decades of racially biased anti-drug policies have a leg up. Under a special program, New Jersey prioritizes granting licenses to dispensaries run by people with marijuana convictions on their records. Now, lawmakers hope that by making equity a cornerstone of their newly legalized markets, those who dealt marijuana in the illegal or legacy market will be persuaded to go legit. I'm here in Trenton, which is at the forefront of New Jersey's legalization efforts. And I'm talking to people who are some of the first in the state to get dispensary licenses based on past the marijuana related offenses. And there's going to be a door um, right okay. there. So um, the entrance here, people walking through here, it's a waiting room. Yep. So the, ex the door where people come in is actually going to be right over right here. here. Okay. Yep. So the door where people come in is going to be over here. So imagine people are going to, so when you come in the door, like you see the receptionist, you check in. Um, check your ID, and then inside the actual retail sales floor, we're going to have a number of different accessories, like I said, bongs, papers, merchandise. Okay. Okay. Um, this is Tahir Johnson. He's a 39-year-old native of Ewing, New Jersey, who's one of the first people with a marijuana-related criminal conviction to own and operate a legal dispensary in New Jersey. He's in the process of renovating an old electrical warehouse into a dispensary called Simply Pure Trenton. You know, actually thinking about it, every time I even think about the reality of what I'm actually doing, it gets kind of overwhelming. It's like I put in a lot of work, quit my job, like did all that stuff to try to do it. But it's like the whole time, it's like you're just going through the motions and you don't know where you're actually going to end up. And I've been on this journey for like five years now. So it's crazy, man. What is going to be here? What is this going to look like? What's its purpose? This part right here was always traditionally a retail store. There was the uh, Metro PCS before and my grandmother's nail shop. This wall is actually coming down. Okay. So this is going to be one big wide open floor space. Getting a license is a high stakes affair. In the third quarter of 2022 alone, legal marijuana sales brought in $177 million across New Jersey, the vast majority of it coming from recreational marijuana. Half of our city is below the poverty line. We have a high unemployment rate, uh, and we have a lot of, uh, like urban America across the United States, uh, uh, problems with gangs and, and, and crime. This is a great way that we could turn a lot of young entrepreneurs uh, into a positive economic advantage uh, and uh, utilizing their experience in, in, uh, in being defeated in the drug war uh, to be victors and being able to get real economic advantage. Johnson is one of many applicants who are prioritized because of his past criminal marijuana-related offenses. He said he's been pulled over and arrested several times for small amounts of cannabis. Now, cannabis is becoming his career. There's always been that response to really want to give back and try to help uplift people that came from similar situations um, and make a difference. And that's really what I've been working at doing for years. But to now actually be the example of what I've been preaching about to try to tell people, like, you know, always talking about um, we need to have more ownership in this business, more opportunities. But now to actually be able to get one myself and be able to show what that achievement looks like, you know, it's amazing. The black market for marijuana in New Jersey remains alive and well, despite statewide decriminalization and the legalization of recreational cannabis. This is Ed Fortune, a local celebrity who goes by the nickname NJ Weedman. His dispensary in downtown Trenton does not currently have a license and operates in a legal gray zone, thanks to years of court battles, both criminal and civil. It also sits right across from Trenton City Hall. Yeah, so tell me about your story. What has led you here? I've been selling weed pretty much my whole adult life. But as this whole legalization movement spread across the country, like I felt like the black market is the real legitimate market, the marijuana market. So where are you in the process to becoming legal? I got the conditional license. We've applied for the annual license. No word yet. And it might be because they obviously know I'm not complying with the conditions. I'm, I'm not totally matched to the state the way it's doing it. The CRC board itself is trying. I like what they're trying. Do I think we're going in the, in the right direction? Yes, I do. I think it's more public opinion than guys like me forcing these issues out there. You know, like, 
what are you going to do with the black market? What are you going to do with the legacy market? What are you going to do with these guys that, that are already selling weed? Like, they have to deal with us now. Like, they could come around and bust us off, too. That would be a political nightmare for that, for that side. Uh, Trenton used to be uh, home of, of Roebling factories that made the uh, uh, steel cables for the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, we made Lennox China here, uh, White House China. We made toilets, car parts, and all of that industry has dried up. And this is the emerging new market that will, will be here for years to come.